certainly on the spirit of the Lord in this place on today. As I said, I just, uh, it's just me. I, I just like being on time for everything, uh, if I possibly can. But I just thank God that he just allowed us to get here on today. Amen. 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 To be in this house one more time. Because some didn't. Uh, some didn't make it. Uh, some didn't wake up. Amen. Uh, heard news on just the other day about another passing of someone uh, uh, young. So I, I just thank God for just his grace and his mercy and for just blessing us on today. But we want to hear what thus saith the Lord uh, in his word on today. God's word is, is something because I often say it's uh, never changing, but it's forever new. Yeah. Because he always gives us something, even in the scriptures that we may have read and we have uh, uh, seemed like almost exhausted. God always revealed to us uh, something else in his word. And, and I'm just grateful that he has blessed me, amen, to be able to come and uh, share this word with you on today. We're going to be looking at a, a, a parable or a story that Jesus told uh, in the book of St. Luke, the 15th chapter. It's a very familiar uh, parable about um, a father and a, and a son, uh, and, and we understand it to be, uh, as they describe it, as the prodigal son. We're not going to focus so much on uh, the prodigal son and all the things in which he has done. We want to look at just uh, one key thing that uh, the Lord dropped into my spirit in this uh, message uh, on today. And we're going to have our foundation scripture in verse 17 of St. Luke, the 14th chapter. And within this uh, chapter uh, 15, it, it tells us, uh, and I'm going to read it, uh, and then we're going to go on. Uh, in this verse uh, 17, it says this, and I'm going to read it in the King James Version as well as the NIV Version. But the King James Version says, and when he came to himself, he said, how many servants of my father have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger. And then in the uh, NIV, it says, and when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's heirs, uh, servants have food to spare, and I am starving to death. Uh, and I wanted to read it in both versions uh, uh, so, you, so you would understand uh, exactly uh, what God is trying to get us to see. And the title of the message on today is Come to Your Senses. Come to Your Senses. Because oftentimes we go through life, we go through situations, we go through uh, so many things that has happened uh, to us and uh, around us and, and, and people that we know. And, and, and oftentimes the enemy would come in to try to get our focus off of uh, God and he would try to get us to look more uh, towards our problem and the situation. And what he's actually trying to do is, is, is distract you from uh, the true meaning of what God has for you. And, and we understand that when we look at our problems and our situations, we begin to magnify them. We begin to uh, make them more than what they truly really are. We, we begin to uh, look at them and we begin to focus on them. And when we focus on them, we lose our senses. We lose uh, the things in which uh, God wants us to see uh, that we are going through or that we're facing. So on, on today, God gave me this uh, message and he just wants me to let you know it's time for you to come to your senses. All right, all right. So as we uh, look down in here, it's, it's, and, and come to your senses is one of them, uh, I think they call them idioms, where uh, it's just an expression uh, uh, or saying that is, is said. And, and, and when you look at it in the sense of defining what come to your senses mean, it's, it's like you regain consciousness. You, you regain your awareness of what's uh, going on. You somewhere, somehow, uh, you started to now think uh, more reasonably about something that you were thinking irrational about or as something that, that you know, uh, had clogged your mind or, or, or made you think foolishness behind it. Uh, and it's key that we understand the, the uh, definition of come to your senses because we need to see how God relates that to ourselves. Because oftentimes, and I don't want to go ahead of myself, we, we tend uh, to allow the situation to overwhelm us. And we, instead of just uh, refrain or, or, or regaining our consciousness in the situation, we allow it 
to just lull us to sleep. We allow it to cause us all kinds of, of hurt and pain and, and everything else. And, and, and we, we at times lose consciousness or we're unaware of the situation's gravity. But God is trying to get us to understand that it's time to come to yourself. Your senses. Let's let's look at it. When we deal with senses, we have to look at at our natural senses. Of course, we have a, a sight, taste, smell, hearing, touch. We have those uh, natural senses, and, and I'm gonna show you how uh, they relate to you in the natural and in the spiritual sense when dealing with this uh, uh, story in the Bible. And, and as I often do, I give some a background of what's taking place. Jesus is, is is dealing with these Pharisees. He's dealing with these ones that came to hear uh, him uh, speak and and those ones that was there his disciples and all those others that were standing around he he begins to tell parables because he's trying to get them to understand uh, uh, you know uh, a heavenly meaning behind an earthly story that they can relate to and, and what he was doing here and after he gave the uh, parable of the lost money and he uh, gave uh, the parable of the lost sheep and things of that nature he gets to this prodigal son because he wanted us to see something Thing on on how uh, God uh, relates to us as His children, where where He's telling the story about uh, a son who came and He asked for. Uh, all that his father was going to give him and in biblical times the father would split up his inheritance or or split up his his, uh, his wealth or or his possessions to his children and he would give certain ones a certain portions of this blessing and when it came to this uh, son uh, he came and he asked his father he said look give me what you're going to give me now and, and, and oftentimes we want it now. We don't want to wait for, for something to happen. We don't, we don't want to wait for, you know, uh, us, uh, for us to get too old to be able to, uh, to have it and enjoy it and all that. We want it now. But, but in, in this time, it was when the, the, the parent went off, then the inheritance or the possessions was given out. So this young uh, uh, man comes up to his father and he tells him, he says, uh, give me all that uh, is b uh, belonging to me. And his father did just that. He, he understood that what his son uh, was wanting. So he gave his son the, the things uh, or, uh, or as the Bible said, a portion of his inheritance. So he, he gave him a portion of the goods, and uh, the Bible said that as he went out, he went out, and they called it uh, spending in a righteous living, meaning he just wasted his money away. Oh, stay with me. We're going to get somewhere. We're going we're gonna to bless your spirit. Uh, but but here we find uh, that this prodigal son, he, he goes out, and, and uh, after the father divides up the uh, portion and gives it to him, he gathers himself with a group of people, uh, and, and he starts wasting wasting his money. Now, right there, we can just uh, pause for a second. Sometimes we link up with some folks that's about taking and not giving. Okay. They, they're about uh, uh, snatching away or pulling away from you. And instead of uh, adding to you, they're subtracting from you. Oh, my goodness. I don't, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Uh, uh, but but you, you have uh, those ones that we have linked up. And, and the Bible said he linked up with others and, and he got to a part, a part of a country and he began to uh, spend his money righteously uh, or, or wastefully. Uh, and when he got to a point where he didn't have anything, he looked around and the same ones that he went out with was no longer around. Was no longer there. They were, they were no longer able to, to, to sustain him when he was blessing and, and when he was giving to them and, and, and sowing to them, they, they, they were there. But as soon as that he fell on empty pockets, they, they was nowhere to be found. So that, that takes us to uh, be remember that the friends and the people that you link up with, will they be there when you don't have? Will they be there when you in need? Will they be there when you need a prayer? Will they be there when, when you need a helping hand? That's the question that we need to ask ourselves. Uh, and the Bible says that he spent all that he had in verse 14 and he rose up there. Then it became a mighty famine in the land. And it says and he began to want this guy after he gets what his father has given him, wasted up and then a famine hits the land. And then he uh, there was nothing left and, and he was in the uh, state of wanting, meaning he didn't have anything. Verse 15 and 16 lets us know that he joined himself to some citizens of a country. 
country and he then began to, to work, if you will, and he began to feed uh, uh, some swine. And, and then at one point in his life, he got to a point where he was so desperate that he said, I will, I'm about to eat the slop that I'm feeding of the pigs. And, and he came uh, uh, in that uh, verse 17, which is our foundation scripture. The Bible said that uh, he came to himself or in other words, when he came to his senses. When he came to his right mind and understood that, that hold up, I don't have to uh, lower myself down. I don't have to uh, uh, treat myself in such a way uh, that I'm about to treat myself. He said, I, know, I remember that, that my father had servants uh, that had so much within themselves uh, that uh, they have enough that I can just go and ask of my father's servants and they will bless me. He came to his senses. Uh, he came to an understanding that, that I don't have to be in this situation situation that I am. And that's just like us today. God is trying to get somebody to understand. You need to come to your senses and understand you don't have to stay in that same situation that you found yourself in or that you've gotten yourself in. God wants you to understand. Now is the time to, to, to re, uh, uh, regain your consciousness and understand that he is still God and that he is able to do exceeding abundant. He is able to do what we asked him to do. He is able to bring you out of your situation but you got to come to yourself you better get your senses together but but we have to look at it uh, real quick some some of these senses here we have to understand that when we deal with our senses we know that we're talking about uh, our body's uh, uh, senses or, or the faculties of our body the, the the things in which uh, we function by and like I said our sense of uh, smell our sense of sight our sense of hearing our sense of taste our, our sense of touch all of these things play a part in our life but when we look at them in the natural uh, and sometimes we say this uh, we when, when we're thinking about it in when we're dealing with sight, we say uh, we, we say this something doesn't look quite right. This is you coming to yourself. You, you say something don't look quite right. Uh, it, it just don't seem like uh, it, it should seem. And, and, and I'm reminded in the book of Exodus in the 14th chapter where Moses was trying to get the children of Israel to the promised land. And they was, of course, dragging their feet. And they got to a point where they seen their circumstances, their sight uh, started to, 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 to fail them in a sense because they, they were leaded out by, by God and by his pillar of fire and his and his cloud and all those things and they had God on their side but but something happened to their sight something happened to what they were seeing they got to a, a what we call a rock in a hard place literally they got between two mountains and and the Red Sea and Pharaoh behind them and they begin to focus or look on uh, things and they lost sight that they were serving a God that brought them out of 400 years of bondage uh, and God that brought them from uh, under the uh, the rule of Pharaoh to a place where he was taking them for uh, uh, milk and honey and all those things. They had lost sight. And Moses says to them, he, he told them, he says, fear not. Uh, and, and he said, and stand still and see what? The salvation of God. Uh, and he will show you. And he's dealing with the sight. He says, see first. Uh, he said, then he will show you. And then he said, and you will see on this day that the Egyptians shall not bother you no more. So as I said before, sometimes we magnify our problems. Problems. We magnify our situation and we look at it with natural sight and not looking at it in the spiritual sense. When I look at it in the spiritual sense, it lets me know that God is on my side and God wants me to focus on the spiritual side and not what my natural man sees. Because oftentimes this flesh is weak, but my spiritual man is so much stronger than this flesh. My spiritual man, I can speak to this flesh and make this flesh begin to get some uh, control with itself but when we look at it in the spiritual they were in a rock in a hard place uh, but they were focusing too much on the situation and the problem and God said I don't want you to focus on that because when you look on that you give limitations uh, God said I'm a God of limitless power and all I got to do is speak to your situation all I got to do is open 
open up your blinded eyes so you can see exactly what I want you to see. And when God begins to open up your sight, you can then understand that I can now see my way out of this situation. They, they could see their way out of what they were going through. When, when Moses has seen the salvation of God, it was that God was going to come in and that, that God was going to deliver them because that's what salvation is. It's deliverance from something. And Moses says, see the salvation. So sometimes you got to look at it and come to your senses in your spiritual sight and understand that God got it all under control. And if God got it under control, I can take my hands off it for a while and let God just run with it and let God begin to bless. Moses was hearing there and, and, and hearing and understanding them fearing and their doubts that came into their, uh, their mind and he had to calm them and he had to let them know that God sees what they were going through and God understands how to bring them out but oftentimes we let our sight get in the way oftentimes we let our struggles get in the way and we focus on our struggles our sicknesses our heartache our pain or, or whatever the thing is we focus on it too much and God said if you quit focusing on those problems God said you will see I already blessed you through those problems and you are still yet here standing and God is going to make a way and God has showed you the way all you have to do is now focus on what God said do and he will bring you out Oh, glory to his name. Oh, we can get we can get ready. We can get there. Uh, so so the, the, the Bible tells us in Psalms. Uh, I'm trying to reframe myself. The Bible tells us uh, in, in Psalms 34 and, and 8, it tells us, oh, taste and see. See, it, it's just two things here. And, and we're going to deal with that taste in a minute. But but when, when when David said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And he, then he said, blesses the man that trusted in him. He had to tell them when you see the salvation of God, when you you see what God has for you when you understand in the spiritual sense of all the blessings that God has bestowed upon us and the promises that he had he said when you see this thing you will understand that it's good and it's not it's not only good but it's, it's, it's exceptionally good and he said taste and see and you will understand that God is good but he put a clause in there he, he said but blessed is them that trusted in him so I can't let my eyesight mess me up from seeing what God is about to do I understand that I'm going through situations I understand that I'm going through heartache and pain but thank be to God I see my way out because God always makes a way of an escape for his people and God will make a way of an escape for you each and every time. All you have to do is understand that on today. But he said, taste and see. So let's deal with that tasting for a moment. Sometimes you say to yourself, I, I got a bad taste about that thing. What that is telling you is you came to your senses. It's saying that something is just not right here. I don't know what it is, but it's leaving a bad taste in my mouth. They are doing too many things. I see too many things happening. Happening, and it's leaving a bad taste in my mouth. David understood that once he tasted this thing, he understood that this world was not nothing. He understood that this world wasn't giving him but pain. David said, but when I tasted and I saw this thing, I understood that God was good. He said, I understood that if I trust in him, he will bring me out every time. So you better taste this thing on today. There's a sweetness of God that we taste. There's a sweetness that God wants of us and if we understand it on today God said if you taste and see me God said if you understand how good I am he said I will bless you so I will bless you abundantly hallelujah in this place God is looking for a certain taste in us hallelujah in this place or oh, we can break it into it now let's jump down to our smelling sense sometimes you say something just don't smell right what it is you can't to your senses. You understood that I know something is fishy in this situation and I'm not going to no longer stand here but we have to understand the enemy. The enemy will have your senses dull. He will have your senses to not function but thank you Jesus on today. I have a spiritual sense of smell. I know when the enemy is up to something because it just don't smell right. I know when the enemy is trying to destroy because it just don't smell right. Hallelujah in this place. So I use my spiritual function and I understand like Isaac said. Hallelujah in 
this place. Isaac said, I got to smell my son. He was going through to give out his blessings. And he called forth his son to come in. And Jacob did something slick. Him and his mom began to try to uh, connive their father to receive the blessing. And Isaac said, come here, son. He said, your voice sounds like Jacob. Hallelujah here. You sing that your Esau, uh, but but you, he said you're saying that you're Esau, uh, but your voice sounds like Jacob. Uh, he said, "Come a little closer." Uh, hallelujah in this place. Uh, God is calling us a little closer, uh, and watch what He's about to do. Uh, Isaac said, "When you get close to me, uh, I'm gonna use my sense of touch first. Uh, I'm gonna touch to see if He feels like my son." Uh, oh, glory be to God. Uh, God is saying, "I'm reaching out to touch." Uh, to see if you are one of mine but first I want to get you close and Isaac got him close to him he began to smell him the Bible said he sniffed him real good he smelled him real close he said come close and kiss me when he drew nigh unto Isaac he smelt his raiment the Bible said and he put on a fake raiment he knew his son Esau smelt like the outdoors he knew his son Esau had hair on his body but he said if I can just touch him I'm relying on my senses right now he said I don't have eyes to see but I have ears to hear he said you sound like my son Jacob but if you come close I use a few more of my senses I'll touch you to feel and see if you're real he touched him and he said well you got the furriness he said but come and lean in and give me a kiss when he leaned in to kiss him the Bible said he smelled his son hallelujah here though Jacob still was deceived and he gave that blessing out he still used his senses and God is saying on today where is the smell that I'm looking for hallelujah in this place don't you know in the back in the Bible age when they went into the temple to give the offering God said I need the smell of smell I need the smell of that sweet smelling savor. I need that aroma coming up unto me. He said, I need to smell what you're talking about. Hallelujah in this place. You can identify somebody by their smell. Oh, glory be to God. And he said, I want to smell your praise. I want to smell your worship. Hallelujah in this place. So in our spiritual senses, you better come to your senses today and understand you're putting off an aroma that God is trying to smell today and God is telling you right now I can't smell nothing because you sit there like you don't know me I can't smell nothing because you act like you don't care I don't smell nothing because you ain't giving me no worship I don't smell nothing hallelujah in this place but he's smelling for us and he said that I want to smell that savior and he said when I smell it and it's good and pleasant to me he said I will bless you I will bless you so but in the book of Malachi I tell you your smell means something to God because in the book of Malachi the Bible said God said I will no longer smell your smell it stink unto me hallelujah in this place so how you smell counts how you smell to God counts and he said I will no longer smell your smell because it stank unto me why was it stinking because they wasn't doing what God said to do they were out there living all kinds of ways they were out there doing all kinds of mess and God said it's stinking unto me but when you come to your senses and you understand that God is in control when you understand God is on your side God will then mess will bless you so hallelujah that when you praise God it mingles in the air when they went in to praise God it would mingle with the incense and that prayer would go up unto God and he was smelling and say oh my goodness you gave me a good sacrifice God is just saying all he wants is a little sacrifice a sacrifice of praise do I have two or three people here today that don't mind giving God what he's smelling for that don't mind giving God what he wants and that is a sweet smelling savior to go up into his nostrils
nostrils so he can begin to bless your situation that he can begin to move on your behalf hallelujah in here you better tap somebody right now and shake them sure enough and say come to your senses you got to give God some praise. Come to your senses. You better understand God is here. Come to your senses and refrain from your, regain your consciousness. Because God is wanting to move in your life. But let me get to touch. Let me get to touch right now. Sometimes you say this don't feel right. Hallelujah in this place. And what it is is you came to your senses. Isaac again if you look at it. When he said to his son to come close. He wanted to touch and make sure it was him. And when he touched his son. He said you feel like my son Esau. Hallelujah in here. Let me tell you something. When God touches your life. When God lays his hand on you. Oh, there's an exchange of a blessing going on. I'm reminded in scripture right now, when Jesus went about doing all he could do, he touched the untouchable. He touched the things that he was not supposed to touch. He touched leopards and they were healed. He touched uh, uh, people with uh, issues of blood and they were healed. I'm reminded of that story when the woman with the issue of blood she said, I know I got to touch him naturally. She said, I'm going to touch the hem of his garment. But she said, this touch that I'm touching, I know my blessing lies in it. And when I touch him, I know he shall re uh, pull this blood up in me. I know I shall be made whole. She pressed her way to the crowd. She fought her way through. Hallelujah in this place. Because she wanted a double touch from God. She wanted to touch him naturally. But she wanted to touch him spiritually. Hallelujah in here. The Bible said there's something about that touch. Because let's look at it real quick. When she touched Jesus. He felt the touch in the hem of his garment. Let me tell you something. It was what was attached to him. She didn't touch his skin. Because oftentimes, if you walk with something flowing. And somebody touches you can't feel it but Jesus his virtue was in it and when she touched that him he said wait a minute I felt a touch they said hold up father hold up rabbi don't you know the crowd is thawing you he said yeah I know the touch of the crowd he said but there's a different touch here there was a touch of faith there was a touch of desperation there was a touch of pleading there was a touch of I need to deliverance. He said, but no somebody touched me. Why? Because I perceive some virtue has come out of me. Hallelujah in this place. That touch that she did. Jesus did. That virtue went out and touched her spirit. It touched her body naturally. And she began to worship. She was frightened in her spirit. But he said, I understand your touch. He said, daughter, be of good courage. He said, oh, your faith has made you whole hallelujah in this place so it's very important how you touch and it's very important how you get touched oh glory I'm, I'm gonna close this up quick today uh, i'm gonna leave that one alone but it's important uh, that touch is important but let's get to this last one this hearing this hearing thing is what we need to see. And as the, the story goes, Jesus tells them, he said, uh, in this story, he said, and he came to himself or he came to a census. Yeah. But let's look at hearing. Sometimes you say, that just don't sound right. Yeah. Uh -huh. That just don't sound right. Yeah. right. What you're doing is you're coming to your senses. Yes. You're saying, look, uh, th th this just doesn't sound like the situation. This just don't sound like that person or, or just don't sound like uh, uh, what I should be uh, hearing or believing. We have to understand that as your hearing is very important. Because when we look at it in a spiritual sense, uh, we were all lost in this world. 
We were all bound to a place called hell. But when Christ came in and he did what he did and, and paid the price for us, he gave us a way back to the Father. But he also told us that, that we are to be saved. And he said uh, we ought to hear his word. And he said, uh, how can we hear uh, unless we uh, hear uh, from a preacher or someone teaching the word? So it's very important that we allow our sense of hearing to step in right quick. We allow that sense of hearing that one day when I heard the word of God, one day when God's word was spoken to me I remember uh, as, as clear as day and some of us sitting here today and, and uh, tuning in today can understand that moment in time where God spoke to us and when we heard the voice of God saying come up and come out of that that you're in told us to get from where we are he told us to stand on our feet he told us to get ourselves together he said can't you hear my voice he said I'm calling on you today he said I call called you so many times before and I remember those moments when I was standing in his house and I heard the word of God speak to my spirit and said now is the time for you to be saved now is the time for you to let this world go because I have greater works for you to do I didn't know what the works was going to be but thank you Jesus that I listened to his words to his voice God thank you that I heard what he said unto me and God today is appealing to somebody right now he said the day that you hear my word he said harden not your heart it's somebody that's going to hear this message you got to understand that this world don't mean you no good this world is trying to destroy you this world is trying to take you out this world is trying to take you to the destination that the enemy has hallelujah in this place but when you hear God's word harden not your heart allow God's word to permeate in your spirit and when it gets down into you real good you holler out what must I do to be saved and thank you Jesus because on a four o'clock prayer five o'clock prayer I got down on my knees and I hollered out Lord save my spirit Lord save my soul from the damnation it was headed and God spoke sure enough to me sure my standing here and said my son I shall save you he said greater work shall you do hallelujah Hallelujah in this place. So you need to let your senses speak up and understand the hearing the voice of God. Because you know the difference between the voice. You know if the enemy is telling you something to do something bad. God is not going to tell you to do something that's hurtful. God is not going to tell you to do something to destroy somebody. God said, I come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. The enemy place in your mind, rob, kill, and destroy. But God said life is in you. Can you hear God speaking to you today? Come on, use your senses right now. Or as the title of the word says, come to your senses right now. And let God begin to speak to your heart. Let God begin to speak to your spirit. And when God speaks to you, trust and believe you will know it's God. And God will begin to bless you like never before. He will open up your understanding. And the thing about about it is oftentimes when we hear something we are so quick to believe a lie we are so quick to believe what a, a false truth about somebody why is that so important today in the sense called hearing because when we hear this thing somebody is spreading lies you have to understand it comes from the father of lies he told that lie in the garden he told it to Adam and Eve he said oh God surely said that you shall not die but he was lying to them then and he's still lying to us now so you better hear sure enough if it's true or if it's false you better listen clear as day and my thing to it is this sometimes you hear and believe a lie faster than the truth. Why? Because the lie is so appealing. Why? Because your father of lies is working in you and is itching to your ears. But when you understand the thing about God, God said all liars have their part in the lake called fire that will burn with fire and brimstone. And the thing about lying is when you believe that lie faster than the truth, you have to then ask yourself a few questions. 
why is this person coming to gossip with me? Why is this person telling me about these lies? Why is this person feeling comfortable about spreading it to me? And who is this person lying or gossiping about? There's a few questions you need to ask when you hear stuff. And then my thing to you is, what are they saying about you when you're going? That same, per oh, y'all don't like that. That same person that brings you gossip. That same person that brings you the lies. What are they saying about you when you walk away? Hallelujah in this place. I know it got tight for a minute. I know somebody's toes done curled up because you spread lies about somebody else. But you don't know the lie that is being spread about you hallelujah in this place but hearing what God has for us we need to understand that God is in control and let me close this message here when I heard God say to me that he is my father he is my Abba father when he heard when I heard him telling me who he was in my life something changed down in my spirit I did not want to do the things that I used to do I did not want to go to the places I used to go I didn't want to act like I used to act hallelujah in this place I don't care how old or how young you are when God begins to speak to you when God begins to touch you when God begins to reveal things to you when God begins to smell that smell in you God is wanting you to come up a little higher he is wanting you to come a little closer to him hallelujah in this place the enemy will have you to be mad on today the enemy will have you to be misunderstood on today but I want you to regain your consciousness right now I see some of you have already went to sleep in your spiritual mind. Some of your senses has already been dulled. Some of your senses have already been cinched. But God said regain your consciousness. If I got to be the prophet right now. If I got to be the one to tell you right now. God has a far better blessing for you than this. God has what he is as in store for you than this. And if you trust and believe God today. God will allow you to come to your senses senses and you can come back to the father because as the prodigal son story in and I'm closing he said I know my father got people in his house that can sustain me sure enough but he said when he got there to his father the father each day would be looking down the road and when the father seen his son coming from afar off he said there is my son coming when his son came up to him the father opened up his arms and took his son in God will do us the same way on today. Yes, we may go astray. Yes, we may backslide. But God said, I'm married to the backslider. He said, all you got to do is come back unto me. Come to your senses right now. He said, just come on back unto me. And when he came to his father, his father could have shunned him. His father could have cast him out. His father could have denied him. But the Bible said that the father said unto his son. He said to a servant go get a robe. Drape it back on his back. Go get a ring and place on his finger. Hallelujah in this place. Then he said let's go get the fatted calf. Let's kill it and have a, a party in this place. Hallelujah in here. Let me tell you when you come back to God and when God is calling for you to come to your senses all you gotta do is believe that God is there with open arms. And God will hug you back in. Hallelujah in here. It's nothing like an embrace from God. It's nothing like an embrace from God. And he welcomed his son back into the fold. But let me tell you this, and I must explain this that the brother came out of the field he came looking and seeing what was going on he said it sounds like a party going on he said what's going on in daddy's house when he got to a servant he said what's going on in there they said your brother is now back your daddy said kill the fatted calf and we killed the fatted calf and now we're partying we're celebrating his return but let me tell you something in this story the brother got so upset the bible said he got angry and would trust and believe when you come to your senses 
Somebody's going to be angry when you come to your senses. Somebody's not going to like it when you come to your senses and you say, I'm no longer going to be out here dwelling among swine. I'm no longer going to be out here fooling with the pigs. I'm going to go back to my father's house. So what you're saying and Jesus is saying in the parable that any given time you're ready to come back, God is waiting on you. Because he's never left you. He's never forsaked you. So anytime that you want to come back, the Father is waiting with open arms. Do I have two or three people that will declare the day that you come to your senses? That you understand exactly what I'm talking about. The Father is saying, come on back. He said, you are now regaining your consciousness. The world had you blinded for a moment. But he said, come on back unto me. And he's there to welcome you in. He's there to bless you and restore you. The prodigal son was restored back to his position. He wasn't restored to a servant. He was restored to a prince of his father's kingdom. Hallelujah in this place. God will restore you sure enough. But the moment you come to your senses, you have to realize that I gotta go back to the Father. I gotta come back in a humbling spirit. I gotta come back knowing that I did wrong. I gotta come back and ask God for forgiveness. The son said, I know I wasted my spending. I know I did what I did, Father. But if you just welcome me back into the fold, hallelujah here. God is saying, I will restore you. You. I will bless you so. Hallelujah in this place. But you need to come to your senses. You need to get your mind right. You need to understand that the enemy is trying to destroy you. And as I return to my seat, you need to understand something sure enough that when you come to your senses, the enemy is going to be mad. The people around you are going to be mad. Why? Because they know God has a blessing for you. They know that God is working it out in your life. They know that God is moving by his spirit on your behalf. When you come to your senses, I can see things so much clearer now. When I come to my senses, I understand that God is working it out. When I come to my senses, every lying tongue that was talked about, when I come to my senses, I can see you for really who you are. When I come to my senses, I smell something that's just not right. But when I come to my senses, I know that God is going to move. I know that God is going to bless. Hallelujah in this place. Come on, stand to your feet right now. God said, I'm trying to smell something here. He said, where is the aroma that I'm looking for? You have to send up your own timbers on today. You have to give God some praise on today. Hallelujah in this place. He's trying to smell your praise. He's trying to see what you're all about. Hallelujah in here. Look, don't be scared to give your praise. Don't be scared to praise God. Don't worry about the person next to you. Don't worry about what they might say. Don't worry about if they tell that you're not real. Hallelujah in this place. God is saying, I want to smell something. I want to smell something sweet into my nostrils. Hallelujah in this place. Are you coming to your senses? Or are you still going to stay in that state of unconsciousness? God said, now is the time to regain it. Because this is the moment in time. He said, the waters are troubled in this nation. God said, I'm ready to do a sweet clean and I'm about to do some miraculous things oh glory be to God thank you God said if you stay in my will God said if you stay in my plan God said I will bring you out I will bring you out better than what you are right now hallelujah in this place do I have some worshipers here today do I have somebody that don't mind giving God praise that don't mind giving God some glory hallelujah in this place you better come to your senses today. You better understand something right now that God is waiting for you. You're not waiting on God. I just got to give God my best praise right now. And the highest praise is hallelujah. Hallelujah God for blessing me. Hallelujah God for making a way out of no way. Hallelujah God for fixing the problem. 
thank you Jesus on today let's put our hands together one more time for the spirit of God glory be to his name some of y'all coming to your senses. I see some of y'all coming to your senses. Hallelujah. Come on right where you are. For the unsaved in this place. Tuning in. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you move by your spirit in this place. Lord, we thank you right now, God, for giving us the moment, the time, Lord, to understand, Lord, that we need you. Lord, so we ask right now, Lord, that you look on the unsaved. Yes. Touch them like never before, God. Yes, save them, dear God. Yes, yes. Lord, there's nothing that you can't save. So, God, we ask that you do it on today. Save them when they cry out unto you, Lord. You see the cares. You understand, God, what we're going through. God, we ask that you would just meet the need, Lord. For your word said you're able to meet each and every need, God. Simply according to your riches and glory. God, we ask that you do it on today. Save. Save like never before, God. Lord, we know the end times are coming. We know that they draw near, God. But Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would just continue to save your people. Touch them, God, in a special way. Those of us who are saved, God, we ask that you continue to bind us there, God. Continue to keep a hedge of protection around us. That when the enemy tries to come up against us like a flood, Lord. Lord, you said you would lift up a standard against him. So, God, we ask that you will fortify this hedge of protection. Bless us, dear God. Cover us with your blood. Saturate us. Overwhelm us, dear God. Lord, we just thank you. We praise you, God. Lord, because we understand, Lord, that even though we're going through natural things, dear God, you said that you can turn them into supernatural. Lord, even though we're going through ordinary things, Lord, you said you can turn them into super, glory, and extra ordinary. So, God, we ask that you do it, dear God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, and we'll praise you, we'll worship you, we'll magnify you. Lord, we ask again now that you touch, Lord, go into the homes, dear God. Go into the houses, Lord. Begin to move by your spirit. Lord, you see what we stand in need of. You know every problem, every care, every pain, every heartache. God, we ask that you heal, dear God. Heal like never before. Lord, you are a God of miracles. God, we ask that you do it on today. God, and we thank you. God, and we worship you, we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, match us and we pray. We thank you, Jehovah God. Amen. 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 Come on, let's put our hands together for the spirit of the Lord. Come on, look at somebody and tell them you love them. Come on, mean it in your heart. God bless you. Jesus.